This is Chaz Evans speaking on behalf of the Land of Enchantment Amateur Hockey Association. The video that you are watching is intended to give you an overview of the duties the off-ice officials perform during a game and some insight into the mechanisms of their jobs. I ask you, why would anyone want to become an off-ice official? It's quite a bit of trouble, and besides, they have to work during the game instead of cheering on their favorite players and team. Why bother? Look at it this way. You'll get personal satisfaction from being part of the game rather than just an onlooker. You'll learn more about the game and some of its intricacies. You'll have more confidence in the events of games after working up close with the game officials. You'll be aiding the success of the organization that makes hockey possible for your favorite player. Your good performance as an off-ice official will certainly be noticed by the coaches and players of visiting teams, thus enhancing the reputation of your entire organization and its hockey program. Everyone in your hockey organization, players, parents, officers, and officials will benefit from your participation. Now come along and let's see what this is all about. The off-ice officials are a somewhat less visible piece of the officiating team, but are an essential part of all hockey games from Mike through professional as played everywhere. The game could not take place without someone to keep score, operate the time clock, or monitor penalty situations. These tasks cannot be done by the on-ice officials because they are really busy overseeing the game in progress on the ice. The off-ice official positions require knowledge of the game and diligence in performance of the duties required. These are not social positions. The minimum age to be able to do these jobs is probably around 14 years old, but is dependent on the maturity of the young person. The USA Hockey Rulebook defines several off-ice official jobs. The official scorer records all events occurring during the game, including goals scored, assists awarded, penalties assessed, goalkeeper statistics, and the times at which each event takes place. This accurate and complete written record will be used as a permanent record of the game to publish statistics for the league, players, and media. This person is generally considered to be the off-ice official leader for the duration of the game. The game timekeeper operates the game clock, including stopping and starting the clock when required, displaying penalty information, and signaling the beginning and end of a warm-up period, playing period, or intermission. The penalty timekeeper ensures that penalized players serve their penalty times correctly and return to the game as intended by the on-ice officials. The game announcer delivers pertinent game information to all who were present at the game. Not all rinks have sound systems available in the scorer's bench, but most do. These four major jobs are usually performed by the two people assigned as scorekeeper and timekeeper, although sometimes an additional person will do the announcing. In some rinks and at some levels of play, there may be penalty box attendants who operate the penalty box door, ensure that penalties are served correctly, and that players return to the ice as intended. They usually receive instructions from the scorekeeper or timekeeper, but in the case of complicated penalties, the referee may wish to speak directly to these persons to clarify any misunderstandings. The information and suggestions that follow are not directed at any one of these positions, but rather at the off-ice officiating team. While much is seemingly pointed at the scorekeeper, the timekeeper should be equally interested. You will need a few things in order to do your job correctly. The most important is the official score sheet. Don't even think about using anything else. Be sure that you find out where to get them. You'll also need a pen, but make it a point to always bring two in case your favorite runs out of ink. Make sure that you have a scratch pad or scrap paper for keeping shots on goal and writing down goal scoring and penalties before transcribing them to the score sheet. It is often easier to write events on a separate sheet of paper while the referee is telling you something than transcribe it carefully onto the score sheet. If you go directly onto the score sheet, you will be amazed how easy it is to write the right thing in the wrong place. The rink's public address system is useful to ensure that goals and assists are correct and that penalties are understood. The on-ice officials, the coaches, the players, and the spectators all appreciate the information received in this manner. If this is available at your rink, please take the trouble to find out how to use it and make it part of the game. Now let's prepare for the game. Be sure to arrive at the rink at least 30 minutes prior to your game time. Your player probably needs to be there at that same time. Locate a score sheet and gather roster information from the coaches and or managers. They can also help you determine which team is to be the home team as that team receives special consideration during the game. This is usually noted on the schedule. If stickers are provided, be sure that you get four, one for each page of the score sheet. Be sure to get the information concerning the coaches and manager. Complete the game identification section on the score sheet. 
Curfew time is the time by which the game must be completed. Most games are curfew games, except at higher levels of hockey. Curfew games may be conducted using running time, stop time, or a combination of both. Discuss with the referees which format is to be followed for your game. Note the period length and whether running time or stop time was used somewhere on the score sheet. For example, 12 minutes stop or 15 minutes run. Verify that the game clock is on. Test it a little to make sure it is working properly and prepare it for the warm-up session by setting the clock to 5 minutes or whatever the warm-up time is for your game. During the warm-up, check off players on the ice against the roster. Count them and count the roster length. The on-ice officials should be helping you with this. At this time, you are mainly looking for players who are not on the roster. Finding them will simplify everyone's lives during the game. Present the score sheet to the referees for their scrutiny and inform them of any roster problems that you have discovered or suspect. Now that we're all ready, it's game time. It's a good idea at this time to clear the scorer's bench of distractions such as small children, musical devices, etc. so that all attention will be concentrated on the game. The timekeeper must prepare the game clock for the playing period. That is, set the clock at 15 minutes or whatever your period length is. You should know this from your earlier discussions with the referee. Record game clock time for all score sheet entries. This is time remaining in the period. The use of colons between minutes and seconds is optional. Let's look at goals and assists first. The referee will tell you the team or color that scored, the player numbers for the goal, and the assists. For example, he may say, blue goal by number 8 from 19. Record each goal on a line by itself and do not leave blank lines. Verify that all players are on the roster. On a standard USA Hockey score sheet, the definitions for the scoring sections are as follows. NO is the sequential number of the goals scored by a team. P is the period. Time is the game clock time when the goal was scored. G is the number of the player scoring the goal as reported by the referee. ASST is for the numbers of players credited with assists by the referee. There may be one, two, or none. Don't modify any of this without the referee's permission. Some coaches or parents will get very heated over unregistered or incorrect goals and assists. Be sure they understand that only with the on-ice official's approval can a score sheet be changed. Now let's investigate penalties, the most difficult area. Record penalty information as indicated by the referee, who will tell you the team or color, the player number, the penalty type, and the offense. For example, red number 28, two minutes for holding. Verify that the player is on the roster. USA Hockey score sheet definitions for the penalties section are as follows. PER is the period number. NO is the number of the penalized player. Offense is as given by the referee, rough, trip, cross-check, etc. Be terse but clear. MIN is the length of the penalty. OFF is the time the player was assessed a penalty and enters the penalty box. Start is the time that player's penalty actually begins expiring. This is usually the same as OFF. On is the time the player returns to the ice. A couple of things about running time penalties. Penalties in running time games will begin expiring when the puck drops to resume play. The score sheet should show the time that the penalty began expiring, not when the penalty was called. Penalties that expire during a stoppage of play in running time games result in a delay to the player leaving the penalty bench. The player must wait until the puck is dropped to resume play before re-entering the game. The score sheet should reflect the normal two-minute or five-minute penalty time, not the extra time the player had to wait for play to resume. Minor and bench minor penalties are two minutes and may terminate if a goal is scored. Major penalties are five minutes. Match penalties are ten minutes on the score sheet, but a substitute serves five minutes in the box. Misconduct and game misconduct penalties are ten minutes. Note that bench minor penalties are team penalties, so write the number of the player serving in parentheses to indicate this, so that the player is not charged in the records. A penalty is two, five, or ten minutes. There are no four-minute penalties. Those are recorded as two two-minute penalties, even though the referee may call it a double minor. And there are no 12-minute penalties. Those are recorded as a two-minute minor and a 10-minute misconduct. If a penalty is being served by a substitute, just list the player serving by putting their number in parentheses after the offense. 
make sure the player who actually committed the offense is listed in the second column. This is to ensure that the proper player gets charged in the records. The off time and the start time are usually the same, but not always. For example, if a player gets a minor penalty and no one else is in the box, the off and start times are the same. The on time may be two minutes later, unless the other team scores a power play goal, in which case the on time is less than two minutes later. If a player gets multiple penalties on the same play, the off and start times are different. In the slide, for example, with 13.47 remaining in the second period, player number 20 gets a minor for checking from behind and a misconduct. That is entered on the sheet as two separate penalties. The three in parentheses says that the minor penalty was served by teammate number three. Assuming the other team does not score, number three re-enters the game at 11.47. Then number 20's 10-minute misconduct starts. Assuming a 15-minute period, number 20 re-enters the game at the first whistle after the 1.47 mark of the second period, in this case, 1.38. What do you do when the referee calls a double minor penalty? An example 